Is your partner driving you crazy on quarantine? <laughs> Today I'm going to talk about the two big reasons why that's happening and my top tips for what to do about it. So let's get into why. There's two big reasons. One is that your bandwidth is low because of all that's happening in the world. So we have, here in the United States, we have demonstrations right now. We have, of course, the pandemic everywhere. We have a, an economy that's feeling scary, people without jobs. We've got you know stuff going on in the news constantly. Is this right? Is that right? A lot of misinformation, a lot of confusion about what's happening. You know, this is our first pandemic for most of us. Maybe we're not doing it perfectly. It's all coming at us. I know for me, my kids were home from school for months and you have to take that on. And I've got teenagers. I don't know what you people are doing with the toddlers there. Oh, my heart goes out to you. I don't know how you were doing that and working. Lots of people out of work, not sure when things are gonna happen again. All of this is draining our mental bandwidth, our ability to think clearly, to have patience, to think things through, to be rational, all of that is wearing on us. And I know that you might think, no, I'm, I'm kind of used to the thing, this quarantine, you know, the self uh, sheltering in place. I'm sort of used to it now. It's not a big deal. Trust me, it is sitting on the back burner. Just like if you had, I don't know, a root canal that had to happen. Even if you weren't thinking about the root canal in that moment and weren't even in pain, trust me, it's sitting in the back burner somewhere. It's, a, it's open in your brain as something that's kind of taking up some of your bandwidth, your ability to deal with stuff. And so as your, uh, this keeps going on and on, thing after thing after thing gets wearing and there's just no room left for really having patience with our partners and really thinking that through. And at the same time, of course, you know, since the dawn of time and human pair bonding, we, <laughs> we were not supposed to be with our partners all day, every day. I get it, you know, the whole uh, for better, for worse, uh, but not all day. Uh, it's a, we've always had, you know, hunters and gatherers. People went one way, you know, and a, the other partner went the other way. June and Ward Cleaver, somebody went to the office and someone stayed home taking care of Beaver. Uh, today in our lives, we tend to be separate and have lots of time away from each other, from our partners. And right now that's not as possible as it used to be. And even if maybe you used to work from home before, you used to be able to go to the gym or you know go places, have lunch with your with your girlfriends out you know somewhere, go get your nails done. Oh, I miss that. Uh, whatever it is, you used to be able to do these things, and your freedom has been drastically curtailed. And all of that again wears on us. So when we go to be with our partners, there's just it's so much harder to find the love and the patience. And again, we're not used to this being together all the time, and it's really, really trying. And I'll tell you, I've seen this for years when people retire. So someone was often home and the other person retired, or they were both at work, but then they, you know, both end up retiring together. Either way, you end up with two people suddenly at home together all the time. And I can't tell you how many couples I get in retirement because they're fighting. I've had 30, 40, 50 year marriages that did great and then retirement happened and everything starts to tank. And that's because we're really not used to this. So here's the good news. Get through this quarantine and you'll be awesome on retirement. You will kick butt. So, so I'm gonna give you those tips again. So that's all of that is one thing that's going on about why it's so hard. And the other thing that's happening is something called the negativity effect or the negativity bias, which is basically that our, the way our brains are built, and I'm not gonna get into all this history because I have this on tons of podcasts and other things on my website. If you're really interested, go to abbymedcalf.com. There's tons of stuff on this. But let me just tell you now that we, our brains have this negativity bias. So when our partners do something good, it, it's much more heavily weighed if they do something bad. So there's a lot of ratios out there. Um, uh, Tierney and um, Bowenmeister call it, the, I think, the four to one ratio. Uh, so for every four negative things that happen or bad stuff in your environment, for every one positive thing that happens, they sort of cancel each other. Uh, I, I'm sorry, for every four uh, positive things that happen, if just one negative thing happens, it cancels it out. Uh, Barbara Fredrickson for years has talked about a three to one ratio. Again, for every three positive things that happen, one negative cancels it out. Uh, and then, of course, uh, marriage researcher, guru, 
Dr. John Gottman talks about a five to one ratio, which, uh, so f literally for every five great things your partner does, every time they say they appreciate something and they love you and you look, your ass looks great in those jeans and everything else, for every one thing you do that's not cool, it, it, skew, it weighs it out. Like you, you didn't get any money in the bank for all those five things. Now, I know, it's, it seems unfair, but it, it's true. And I think the ratio is higher for partnerships because we have higher expectations of those people that we love, you know, that are supposed to have our back, are supposed to be our teammates. Now, at this, so one of the things that I wanna get right into with you when we talk about uh, the tips is related to this, which is that I, most people start, try to focus on the po doing positives for their partner. And I have to tell you, that's great, but really what you wanna do is avoid doing the bad stuff. That's what you really want to do because those are the things that really uh, undermine a partnership. So, for example, I had someone, it was a while ago now because we've been on uh, quarantine for a while, but I had a man in my office who literally during our session said to me, oh my gosh, it was my, <laughs> it was my wife's birthday yesterday and I forgot. He realized he'd forgotten. He was on a business trip. Uh, he had just gotten back uh, that day actually and I was meeting with him. And he, he said, oh, I'll make it up to her. It's all good. You know, I'm going to do something really big for her next week. And I was like, sweetie, that ain't going to work. So, and we do this all the time. We think we're going to make up for something bad. So number one, he would have to do at least five positive things to make up for that. Like one night for dinner and a nice show ain't going to do it. But worse, again, negative things carry more weight. We remember them longer. We, they carry more weight in our brain. We think of them, our emotions are more tied to them, and they, they really have a bigger impact than positive ones do. So the biggest thing I can tell you right now is don't over promise. Don't, if you make a promise to your partner, if you say you're gonna take out the trash or walk the dog or whatever, friggin' do it, do it. Don't say you're gonna do something if you're not gonna do it, because that's the worst thing. That, that, that's doing more harm to your relationship than any, anything else. So I really want you to watch your language and what you promise and be mindful about what you say you're gonna do and do it. We get, uh, in the research shows, we actually get not a lot of credit when we, when we kind of go over and above. You know, if we do more than we said we were, that, you know, that's nice and people like it, but it doesn't carry the same weight as when we don't do what we promised. When we don't fall through on what we promised, that is like, you know, a, a 10 megawatt bomb. And when we over deliver on something we promised, we get like a little smidgen of an extra. So there, this, the weight of what we hold for negative versus positive is a really big disparity and you just really have to understand that. So get rid of that idea that you're gonna make up for things or that it's not a big deal if you say you're gonna do something you don't, what's the big deal? You know, I didn't take out the trash on Tuesday. You know, why is this so big to you? Get, Stop thinking that way and start really thinking that your word is law. If you say it, it's got to happen and you have to take responsibility. So that's the biggest thing you can be doing on quarantine to stop making your partner nuts. The other thing, of course, is start focusing on positive things as best you can. And that whatever that is, really think about things you appreciate about your partner. Put your brain into a different mindset as often as you can so that you're really focused on what's working in your relationship, what you're grateful for, what you appreciate. Um, and I've talked a lot about the importance of appreciation versus gratitude. Gratitude is sort of far from us. You know, oh, I'm grateful for our home. Lots of people right now don't have homes. Lots of people don't have jobs right now. I'm so grateful. That's nice. I'm not saying don't do that, but it's very different to really in a moment appreciate something. Like you're eating something and you're appreciating, wow, I was hungry and it's so good to eat something that I love when I'm so hungry. I'm so appreciative of this right now. It, you might use the word gratitude, but really what you're doing is you're in the here and now, present moment appreciating. Gratitude isn't really in the here and now. It's sort of in a, a bigger picture and you don't get the same bang for your buck, so believe it or not. And so for my thing, when I wake up in the morning is I try to right away have a really positive appreciation right in that moment. So I wake up and I might appreciate how good it feels to stretch. I might, ah, oh, I'm just, mm, I have this moment. I might appreciate how great my very high thread count pillowcase is and how soft it feels or how warm and toasty I am or whatever. I just in that moment or how beautiful 
You know, I look at this picture I really like on my wall in my bedroom. I might look at that and just appreciate it for a moment. Just that moment, just a few seconds of just ah, and then go in the shower or work out or whatever it is that you do. And because you really want to get that positive momentum working. I talk about momentum a lot. And if you start your day crappy, and then you try you know, later in the day to stop feeling crappy, it's harder because you've had all this negative momentum all day. And if you've been complaining about your partner for hours and hours and thinking about how much they suck and I hate that they do that and this isn't good, it's just that negative momentum. It's very hard to stop later. But if you start with positive momentum, you're doing the opposite. You're getting that positive momentum going and you keep going. And you know this is true. If you eat, for example, like a great breakfast, you're a little more motivated maybe to work out or vice versa. Um, you know, you start your day in a certain way and you feel like, yeah, you know, and you, like you can kind of kick butt as you move through the day. That's using positive momentum. Way easier to deal with. The other thing I want you to know is, I'm going to say two more things. One is don't make any major decisions about your relationship during this time. This is not the time to be wondering, should I stay with this person? Should I not? Ugh, our relationship isn't, isn't you know, is irreparable, um, whatever. Don't, this is not now. This isn't, this is a very small microcosm right this minute of something else. And like I said earlier, we really don't have the bandwidth the way we think we do to think through things like our relationship. So just don't judge it right now. Don't put a lot of time and effort into, you know, oh, you know, the sky is falling. Just address it after. <laughs> after we're out of all this, after things have gotten a little more back to normal, you can then make some decisions about how you'd like to handle it. Doesn't mean you couldn't go to therapy right now in quarantine or anything else, but really don't uh, get too caught up in negativity about your relationship right this moment because you're not thinking clearly, believe it or not. And this last piece is really whenever you're focused on your partner, look at yourself. Look at yourself. Every time you think, oh, I can't believe he does that, or oh, what is she thinking, or oh, he drives me crazy. What, every time you do that, stop and think, what am I doing? What, where am I at right now? And I really want you to check one of the things that I do is I check what I call sort of my emotional vibration. Like, what's my predominant emotion right now? Right now, as you're listening, think to yourself, what's my predominant emotion right this minute as I'm listening to Abby gab away? What, am, I, am I mostly anxious? Am I happy? Am I content? Am I overwhelmed? Am I uh, feeling impatient? Like, why isn't she shutting up yet? I, I've, I've got the point. Let's move on. <laughs> you know, what's that overwhelming vibration? What's that, over, yeah, that top emotion that you're having? Because trust me, that's what your partner is picking up on most of the time. So, you know, check yourself before you wreck yourself kind of thing. Come back to you. You cannot control your partner. Trust me, I have tried. My man will tell you, I do try to control him. It does not work. Uh, you can only control yourself and your reactions to things. So it's really more important than ever that you check in with what you're doing. Every time you look at your partner, think about what you could do. What can I do to make this better? How do I have to be? I say it a lot. If you want to see more, appreci uh, more appreciation, be more appreciative. If you want to see more love, be more loving. You want to, whatever it is, be more of that thing and you will really get it back in spades. So that's it for today. I'm Dr. Abby Metcalf. I help people create lasting change in their relationships, even if their partner, mother, boss, sister, husband, whoever won't do a thing. If you want more information, definitely check out my podcast. You can get it anywhere you download podcasts from Spotify to Apple, iTunes everywhere, uh, and on my website, abbymetcalf.com.